Hi guys, and welcome to part one of my Modeling for Minecraft Blender series. Um, today we're going to be setting up your Blender environment so that you have a studio to work from for every uh, Minecraft project that you have for your models. Um, when you first start up Blender, if you're not familiar with it, this is a normal scene that you would have. Um, you simply click away from this uh, window and it disappears. Um, movement in Blender is a little bit strange at times. To pan around your scene, you simply hold down the middle mouse button and drag, like this. And in order to move in the scene, you hold down shift and the middle mouse button and you do the same thing. That should sort out your basic navigation, which should be all that you need for today. Um, the first things we're going to do in order to set up this is we're going to delete these objects that are in this scene right now. So in order to do that, you simply hit delete on your keyboard and this little window will pop up and you click delete. You right click to select other objects in the scene. Here we want to get rid of a lamp. Again, delete delete and here a camera right click hit delete click delete and your scene is fresh and empty the first thing we want to do is we want to change the unit setup um, in order to do that you want to come into here in this properties window and you want to click on the scene button which is the third one across and then you want to come down and you want to change that to metric the reason we want to change that to metric is because in Minecraft a single cube is one meter by one meter by one meter. Um, and so we want to work with as close to Minecraft as we possibly can. That way each one of these grid squares here automatically in Blender it's on a scale of one is set up to be one meter by one meter by one meter. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create a cuboid. In order to do that, we just deleted one, but you may as well learn how to create something as well. As you hit Control and A, oh, sorry, <laughs> Shift and A, and that brings up your Add menu, and you want to add a cube mesh. So you make sure mesh is assigned, and then cube. And that creates a cube. Then you want to change the properties of the cube so that we get a nice snug spot in the uh, in the positive area of your window, which is over here, I believe. Anyway, in to bring up your um, to bring up those properties. Otherwise, if you don't want to use hotkeys, you can come down to View Properties. Anyway, we want to scroll up here. Make sure we're on location. And we want to change this to 0 0.5. This one also needs to be 0 0.5. Finally, no, not 1 meter. Z needs to be 0 0.5. And then you want to come down to dimensions and you want to change that to 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter. Now we have a nice cube in the corner of our positive axis, positive x positive Y, positive Z. Just a note, Minecraft uses a strange system where up is Y. Um, in actual fact, most 3D studios and most 3D orientation in general, the X plane is that direction, the Y plane is that direction, and Z is up, not Y. Um, the other thing that we want to do now is we want to make sure that our user properties are set so that there is no special filtering or anything on textures. That means that our pixelated textures just remain as crisp as possible. Um, in order to do that, you want to come across to your, your window here. You've got these buttons. Each of these panels, by the way, can be changed to be absolutely anything at any time. They don't have to remain like this. So we're just going to borrow this one, and we're going to change it to user preferences. And let me just open that up so it's a little more obvious. And then you come across to system, and you want to turn off map maps. 
make sure mip maps is turned off or else things are going to look strange later on anyway we want to just shrink that back down and then now that little button is down the bottom so we want to click on that and we want to change that back to properties where did that go here it is now with properties we want to open this up a little bit bigger again and we want to come to textures so we want to make a new texture and it'll be set to clouds we don't want clouds I mean you might want clouds but for this one we want to change it to images or movie but we're just going to be using images you come down to image if it's closed open it up hit open now um, something that doesn't come standard with blender is a file structure for assets um, scene pieces models that sort of thing so I've set up a very basic um, folder structure for you to see if I come into program files and then find blender foundation I've put underneath the blender folder a projects folder I created that folder in the Explorer window I'm sure you all have access to an Explorer window so click on projects and inside projects I've put assets assets is where you would put your images uh, your textures UV maps that sort of thing and exported which we're going to use a lot later in this series but um, basically that's where your final object file will go anyway if I come into assets I've got these textures now you can access these textures via a Dropbox download that I have for you in the description of this video so make sure you grab that because you're going to need all of these textures well not all of them but they're very handy these are the ones that I use so first things first we're going to grab 16, 16 checker PNG open image something we're going to want to do as you can see this preview it's all blurry and um, we're going to want to fix that so if we come down to image sampling we want to turn off mip map we don't want to use any alphas we don't want interpolation we also want to change this to an area filter and then we want to change the filter size to as small as possibly can which I believe is 0 0.10 and we want to tick minimum filter size this means hopefully nothing will be applied to our textures um, as far as special edits or anything we want the texture to be as raw as possible because we're working with very small resolutions um, once that's done our, we want to close as many of these as possible to make it more comfortable to view probably want to keep image open actually if we come across to texture we just want to change that to 16x checker 16 times is the resolution and checker is well describes what it is and then we hit uh, the add new texture button believe it or not this is a new texture here's the one we just set there's the one we just are on now so we want to click on the open button which is this one here and we want to click on 24 times checker and then open image and then we want to change this name to be 24 times checker and then we're going to do that again for the next one open 32 times open image come in here change the name 32 times checker and now I'm going to be right back while I do that for every single texture and you should do that too okay guys I'm back and I've just finished putting in the last one which is the stone texture so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to apply that texture to our cube so our cube looks like a minecraft stone block in order to do that I'm just going to open up this a bit wider move this one down and I'm going to click on that button to change the panel type and I'm going to move that to UV image editor then I'm going to come across down to here and I'm going to make sure that this block is selected you know that by the orange border come down to our object mode change that to edit mode then we want to click on mesh and then we want to go to UV unwrap unwrap so now we've got an unwrapped UVW uh, that means we can now apply a texture to the image so what we do is we come up to our UV window we click on the the button with the up and down and the little image symbol and we change that to one of the textures we input in this case we're changing it to stone now you might be thinking well I just applied a texture but it's still grey that's because we need to change how this viewport looks and in order to do that we come down to here we click here and we change that to texture now we have the texture display 
We also want to change this from edit mode back to object mode. And now we see we have a nice stone cube. So that finishes up for setting up the environment for Blender. Um, next time we'll get into the modeling stages. I'm not going to tell you what we're going to be modeling yet because not even the 3ds Max guys know. Um, and they got their first environment video yesterday. Um, so uh, I'm just going to sign off now. I think uh, I finished. Oh, no. One last thing, and I did this with the 3ds Max one as well. I forgot to save it, and I had to edit the video later, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to come up to File. We're going to go to Save As, and then we're going to make sure... I've already saved one here, but you're going to make sure that you've got mcstudio.blend. Save as a Blender file. Saved. Now, uh, the important thing is, if I close Blender now, and then reopen it, click out, File, open mcstudio.blend, open Blender file, everything we set up is still here. UV window, everything. So, oh, the only thing that doesn't <clears throat> save, and you're going to have to change this every single time you come in, or at least as far as I know, it's going to have to go back into UV um, user preferences, go to system, and you're going to have to go and turn off maps again. It's annoying, but... Eh, it's a small price to pay, pay for a powerful free program, right? Anyway, um, I hope you guys all enjoyed this environment setup for Blender. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.